Okay, so I've hatched a bunch of chicks. I think I have 13 now. So I need to get the bruiser set up for them. This is just a pen my brother and I made. And just hardware cloth, which I don't recommend. I have, I have this divider here with hardware cloth. Because I have another, you know, there's another pen right there. And the divider works, but not, not for the top because it's, it's too, uh, I don't know, brittle is the word, but it's not flexible anyway, so it keeps breaking. That's what we had originally across this part too, but it's not worth it. And then I can get my heat lamp set up and obviously it needs cleaned and there's my shavings that I'll put in it. So, and then I need to find, well there's that piece of wire right there, I'm going to see if it'll work to stretch over top of this open area here. That's what we've used, but looks like it's kind of beat up, so we'll see. So let's get started. So I use cedar shavings rather than straw because straw ignites really easily and shavings don't seem to. So it's safer to use shavings than straw. Hmm. Guess we need some new lamps. Ours are outdated for these wolves or something. Guess I'm going down again. So I went back to town and got a new heat lamp, and at, before I bought it I asked him if I could try it out, make sure it worked. And so I grabbed the bulb off the shelf and he let me do that. And it worked. However, the problem was, this is the bulb I picked up earlier, and this is a different bulb. So I went ahead and got this one too, just in case it's the bulb that's acting up. So we're going to see. So we'll see if this one even screws in. You can see that one screws in there way, way deeper than you know, the ones we tried this morning. Okay, so the height I like for that for the first couple days is right about here. Let's up a little bit. So we'll do it there. Just take it onto this joint right here. What I'm going to do here is find another nail somewhere. There's one. I'll use that one. If you leave any dangling wires, the chickens are going to roost on them and pull them down. Or just fly into them on accident. everything up out of the way. What we have here is an extension cord coming out the window. 
going up to the three-way and a timer and the supplemental chicken house lighting up here is what's hooked onto the timer. We set it for red goes from five to seven in the evening, five to seven in the morning. Get them fourteen hours of light. The other cord runs down there to the heat lamp and the brooder pin. So we got the lights finally figured out. Boy, it took a long time. Okay, so now we're ready for the chicks to come in. I have these sort of strategically placed. Um, I like to put the water on this end, and put the heat lamp kind of against the wall over there. And then you can see in relation to the heat lamp where the food is. Kind of to create a little bit of an area there where they'll kind of stay there underneath the lamp. Um, because when you first put them in here they're not real sure what they're supposed to be doing, where they're supposed to be going. So kind of helps me pen them in slightly. And actually, I forgot. Open up. I like to leave that open for the first couple of days just so I get a good understanding of where the food is. Easier for them to get to. So well, let's go get our little chicks. So when I first put them in here, they're all huddled together. It looks like they're cold. Looks like I should lower the lamp. However, I really don't need to. It's because they're scared. That's why they're all huddled together. That's not because they're cold. They'll sort of spread out in a little bit here. Come back and show you that. Okay, so now that we've had time to settle in. Two days to be exact. Look how spread out they are. Just having fun. The lighting's really weird. Um. It's colder today than it was <clears throat> when I first brought it out. And you saw a huddle in your lamp, they were there just scared and didn't know what was going on. Did perfectly fine. There's two. There's one laying down and there's one just kind of standing up in the middle of the other chicks are surrounding a little bit. Ran over its head. <clears throat> Those two just have never done well. I'm thinking they're not going to make it. But we'll see if those chicks don't bully it too bad. So this is what I do. Just put the food and water in there and make sure the lamp is set and just leave them alone. Some people introduce them to the water by putting mancala beads or marbles or something in there so they'll peck at it. Or even by just dipping their beak into it so they realize that it's water. We used to do that but we don't anymore. They, they, you know, they run around and they explore and they're hungry and they're looking for stuff to eat and drink, so they figure it out on their own plenty fast. Um, there's a difference between home hatch chicks and hatchery chicks, though, because hatchery chicks have spent two or three days in the mail already. So with those ones, I do dip their beaks and make sure they get stuff to drink. Usually electrolytes or maybe some honey or corn syrup or something. Give them some energy. But for homegrown ones, I've only been in the incubator for until they dry off, a couple hours. I just bring them out here and they find the food and water themselves. I don't help them. I could watch these things for hours. Chicks are so fun. I love watching 
stitching chicks. I notice right there that the feeder is far enough away from the wall that no one can get stuck back there. Just little things like that you gotta watch out for. And I'll shut that lid right tonight and when I come back out. Now that they know where the food is. Hey, bye for now, birdies. They grow big and strong. Yeah, drink lots of water.